My name is Bob Stavell. I spent 30 years with the Derbyshire Fire Service. Best job I've uh, ever had. And then retired in 2008. And then 2009 I was involved in a serious road traffic accident. Myself on a motorbike and uh, somebody else in a tin box. Well, received a phone call from the police. Not the call you want. Been the road accident. Briefly got told mum's been flown to Gloucester. She's passed away. Your dad got flown to Selly Oak. He's fighting for his life. So basically, concentrate on your dad more than your mum and make your way here. And when I was flown into Selly Oak, the way they saw me, because I'd exploded, my legs were hanging off all sorts. Selly Oak then was obviously part NHS and partly service hospital. God, he looks like he's been blown up. They knew what to do with me. That's one of the reasons why I'm still alive. Dad was just so unrecognisable. I hate to think how many machines he had attached to him coming out of him and just knowing he was in a coma, it's just almost like you're looking at someone else that doesn't belong to you. I died five times, but they brought me back, back to life again. And uh, said, it's never happened before. So what, everything we did after that was an experiment. And well, what you see now is what they did. Okay, it was like that for a long time. I mean, I sat with him almost every day, but I'd be with him when they try and give him his food via the tube, when they have to change him via you know, physio, I was literally at everything. And then mum's funeral, and thankfully he came around enough to choose the song to play. He couldn't be at the funeral himself, so he chose the song. And then literally, I think it was the same week as the funeral, we got a phone call. Dad had had a cardiac arrest and been taken back into the trauma unit. When he came around, he was just so different, didn't know who I was, didn't know who people were, he'd swear blind I'm not his daughter. Deep down he must have known because he'd refuse all the nurses to feed him, he used to let me feed him. And it was so proud, I once came on the ward expecting the usual and he suddenly recognised me. He literally, my daughter's here, my daughter's here. And that's, I'll never forget, just seeing that look on his face that I'm his daughter again. I spent virtually a year in hospital for, after the accident and then I was discharged. I was at home, well, we discharged straight to home then, looking after myself, but I was very much housebound. I couldn't walk, I was on um, a Delta frame, equivalent of a Zimmer frame. I contacted the firefighters charity and somebody came to see me and said, yep, you can go, we'll arrange for you to go up to Penrith. Well, I had experience of Penrith from before when I was actually in the job. I'd been up there twice. One of the results of the crash was I've lost a hell of a lot of my memory, part of it due to the trauma and part of it due to the actual physical damage, I had brain damage. But when I went up there, um, there were several members of the staff who remembered me and saw me, oh, hey, Bob, are you back again? <laughs> firefighter charity, they just concentrate on, you know, the firefighter. Oh, and his just morale picked up. They were trying to find out what state I was in, what I could and couldn't do. I said, right, we've got some exercises for you. So it was, finding the feet in a way. And he used to come back so pleased, wait, can't wait to go back again. And since then, the hospital said they'd never walk. You know, he's gone from a wheelchair to a Zimmer frame to crutches. And now, all because of Penrith, he walks with just literally hiking sticks. Apparently I've done far better than anybody expected. I shouldn't be able to walk, especially in a wheelchair. Um, <laughs> I can do press-ups and things like that, which, that's not possible. But yes, they've put me back on my feet again. Oh yeah, I sat at your bedside while you're fighting for your life. <laughs> I saw him just in a coma with machines attached to him. I know nothing of it. I have no memory of it. So he didn't know how proud I am to see him work all that way, take a little step back again, go all the way. Then when he went to the charity for more intense rehab than the NHS will give, <clears throat> you can know. He wouldn't be where he is now if it wasn't for that. That's why I'm so proud of you all.